Hi, I'd like to talk about an important data science topic, a pathology or probably the biggest blocker to success in data science projects in production. And it is, and it is overfitting or regression to mediocrity. Also called regression to the mean. So overfitting or regression to mediocrity is what happens when your model learns things about your training data that it are not true in general. So basically your model decides to impress you on your training data. It gets lucky on your training data, achieves things on the training data that it will not be able to do in practice. And that getting lucky during the judgment is actually extremely bad luck. You wanna save your luck for deployment and production. You do not want to be lucky in your QA framework. You would like things that are gonna to fail to fail in QA or quality assurance. So this effect of overfitting or regression to mediocrity is why data science is interesting. That with enough mathematics and computers, we can almost always fit our training data. It's can we build a model that actually works in the future? And to get at that, I'd like to work an example using both fair, six-sided dice that have a chance of coming up all the numbers one through six equally likely, and unfair dice that always come up five. And these are favorable unfair dice. That the number of pips is how valuable each of these is, and we think that these dice that always come up five are actually more valuable than these ones that come up one through six because the average value of this is 3.5, the divisor between three and four. So let's go ahead and work that example. To the expert or experienced practitioner, it's considered obvious that one of the biggest effects, and it's a negative effect in data science, is overfitting, which can also be thought of as regression to the mean or regression to mediocrity. The idea is, with some effort, one can usually build a model that works very well on training data. It essentially memorizes the data it is built on. However, it's quite another thing for that model actually to perform well on data that it hasn't seen, be that test data or future application data when the model is deployed. This can be considered somewhat surprising, as usually as data science practitioners, we use unbiased techniques. For instance, linear regression is very famous for being the best in the family of unbiased linear estimators. So where are we getting the bias if our tools are unbiased? Well, it turns out model evaluation and selection is inherently biased. Making a decision based on the outcome, choosing the best model, those are the biased procedures. So let's work an example to get that deeper into our intuition. So here we have a bunch of fair, normal, six-sided dice. They have an equal probability of coming up on any one of the sides, which are labeled one through six. So the expected value or average number of pips or number on these dice is 3.5. Here we have some special dice. These are dice that every single face has a five. So the expected value of these unfair dice is five, higher than the 3.5 expected value of these fair dice. Now, pretend that each and every one of these dice, the value returned when rolled is the value of this deal. So this might be worth six, this might be worth three, and this might be worth one. This is our gross revenue on the deal. And let's just suppose it costs us $4 to try to make a deal. So this die is always profitable. Five is always above four. This die is often profitable, that's plus two, and often unprofitable, that's minus three, one minus four. And in fact, on average, it's unprofitable because the expected value of the number of pips is 3.5 and we said the cost of rolling the die is four. So on average, these are unprofitable deals, these are profitable deals. And our usual empirical data science or A-B testing question is to identify a subset of deal types we want to go. So suppose if we identify it's this deal is profitable, we can buy more of that nature. Now, why do we care about our estimate being wrong? Here's why. Let's do just one joint experiment where we roll all the dies at once. 
So why do we care? We're going to say that we're going to run one experiment where we sample from all these dyes. Now each dice die represents a possible traffic source we can buy additional traffic of that same characteristic from. And we only can service so many traffic sources. We can maybe only implement so many APIs. Each one might be a different API or partner we need to work with. So we are only going to be able to take three. So why we care about our estimates being wrong is if we can only take three and we use the experimental value seen, well, the top three is this six, this six, and, um, well, one of the fives. And let's just assume we get lucky and we actually take one of the special fives. So that means when all is said and done, we selected these three traffic sources. This one, again, cost is always $4. This one has an expected return of $1 every time we apply it. This one, well, what happens when we re-roll it? Is it always going to be a six? Of course not. This has an expected value of negative one half. Um, this was worth um, negative one. It cost us four to roll and we got three back. This um, cost us four to roll and we got zero back, so this was a net zero. So you see, these die are delivering value, in fact, negative value, at a much slower rate than picking the proper ones. So the reason we care is the selection bias, that just because a die rolled six once, if it's a fair die, it literally doesn't mean it's always going to roll it again. However, this unfair die that is always rigged to roll fives, that's the one we wanted. And these other ones, if picked on their observed behavior only once, can cut in front of it, cut in front of it, and cause us to make the wrong decision. Now, of course, we can better estimate the traffic through experimental repetition. So basically, yes, this was a small sample size problem, so we do want to up the sample sizes. But the concept is very critical that when you pick based on performance, you're basically you have some chance of making the wrong decision because you're picking based on realized performance instead of inherent performance. And that's sort of called the outcome fallacy, that the observed outcome of any one roll of a die is not the true value of that die. And again, I'm going to just roll a few with the one special die that's all five, which is higher value. And we'll see, is it the winner? And in this case, it's among the winners. There's other fives, and we got in the lucky case no sixes showed up. But if we do that again, with good probability, one or more of the die cut in front of the one we actually wanted, causing us to make a wrong decision. Now, in big data, this can happen because we might have a very complicated system with very many variables. So even though we're making correct gross decisions, some of the sub-decisions in our model might be based on this. So the idea is when we pick based on outcome, we say this is the best of these three die, that's a false decision. That, that's only true if we repeat it a lot to get a reliable estimate of the behavior of the die, and that can block out useful decisions. So again, this is the overfit property or pathology. Uh, regression to mediocrity, or regression to the mean, and it is the biggest problem in data science is how to build a model that not only works well on training data, but works well in the future, because that's usually our real goal.